Okay, so we start. Uh, this is uh, lecture ten. Uh, the title I kept is mathematical fundamentals, which I was telling you the other day. Maybe uh, some of the basic understandings of vectors and matrices I will explain you. But before that, we'll complete the remaining portions of our discussion that was dh parameters and dh transformations. So, two announcements here. Uh, so, I will be away for next two weeks. So, hence for me there will be no class and I will be back on July 5th and onwards there will be classes will be scheduled for me on robotics. And today's lecture outline is put here as usual 10 leg dot uh, pdf here. So, to remind you what we have done day before yesterday's class, we talked about Denafit Hartenberg parameters and that was used for relative configuration of one link with respect to the previous one and there are four parameters. <coughs> two of them are always constant and if there is a prismatic one or devolute one then 2 plus one of them b or theta will be constant. If it is a revolute joint then a i alpha i and b i are constant. If it is a revolute joint this are the constant and theta i is the variable one if it is a prismatic joint then a i alpha i and theta i are constant and b i is variable. Then we went up to discuss that how to coordinate frames attached to two links can be related using a homogeneous transformation which is a 4 by 4 matrix in terms of the dh parameters and then we have seen two examples one or two more examples we will see today but i have given an assignment hope at least one of you will show me what you have done so for uh, the task so that was the task that i have a revolute joint here uh, sorry I have a prismatic joint here I have a revolute joint here. So, my first link is translating in this direction and my second link is rotating in these directions. I requested if one or two of you can show me in, in, in just raising the page to me what you have done. Okay, little down. Okay, just hold on. A uh, little front towards me, towards the camera. Okay, a little down now. Okay, just hold on. Okay, good. Thank you, thank you. You can sit now. Okay, so uh, now we are becoming little interactive now that is uh, happy. So, the assignment uh, of the dh frames and the find their dh parameters the solutions were aware in the book. So, it was not difficult for you to verify, but uh, I will show you the results also because I will talk to you about the transformations as well. So, for today's discussion we will be finishing the last part of it from lecture 9 by showing you two more examples where we will show you the dh parameters one of them will be 
complex one special and then talk about DH transformations. Following that we will be discussing some of the basics of vectors and matrices as a part of our mathematical fundamentals and I presume you have taken the printout of my ch capital A dot pdf file from the website. So, let us go to the examples. <coughs> so, this uh, okay. before I show you two more examples including the one you have showed me for dh parameters, let us work on the dh transformations also. So, in the last class we have derived that transformations between frame i and i plus 1 can be given by this 4 by 4 matrix and I repeat in this 4 by 4 matrix this we divide it like this and the top portion is my Q my rotation matrix this is the origin of frame i plus 1 with respect to the origin of frame i and bottom 0 and 1 were required for the homogeneous transformation purposes. So, for the for the planar thrilling case for the planar thrilling case this is my planar three link arm for which for which our d h parameter was this. If I now want to calculate this transformation matrices meaning what is T 1 what is what is T 1 which will relate these two frame then what is T 2 which will relate these two frame and what is T 3 what will relate these three. Let us start with T 1 here T 1 we go back to see the T 1. So, for the T 1 uh, this is a d h parameter b i 0 0 0 theta all variable quantity a's are a 1 a 2 a 3 and 0 0 0. So, remember b and alpha are zeros. So, if you now go back b is 0. So, this term should be 0 alpha is 0 that means cos alpha cos 0 is 1. So, that means this term will remain as minus sin theta this will remain cos theta and this will be 0 and sin 0 is 0 sin 0 is 0 and cos 0 is 1. So, before I show you that slide T 1 relating frame 1 and 2 for the planar thrilling arm I can find out the result from here it will be cos theta 1 sin theta 1 0 cos theta 1 sin theta 1 0 because I am putting i equal to 1 2 3 because in this planar case they will have only theta is a variable quantity and a is different. So, cos theta 1 sin theta 1 0 this will be minus sin theta 1 cos theta 1 0. So, minus sin theta 1 cos theta 1 0 this will be 0 0 1. 0 0 1 and this will be a 1 cos theta 1 a 1 sin theta 1 and b 1 is 0. So, a 1 cos theta 1 b 1 sorry a 1 sin theta 1 and 0. So, t 1 t 2 t 3 all will have same. So, t 1 will be relating frame 1 and 2 t 2 will be relating frame 2 and 3 and T 3 will be relating frame 3 and 4. Similarly, the next example that means revolute prismatic arm. <coughs> so, that was our revolute prismatic arm. We can now see its d h parameter. So, I want to first calculate T 1 
which will be relating frame 1 and frame 2. So, from T 1 I would like you to derive together with me by remembering for 1 b is 0 this is theta 1 0 pi by 2. So, 0 theta 1 0 pi by 2 go back to the formula. So, b 1 was 0. So, this will be 0. So, this was theta 1 then uh, your a was 0. So, this is 0 and then alpha was pi by 2. So, theta 1 cos theta 1 sin theta 1 0. So, cos theta 1 sin theta 1 0 then alpha is pi by 2. So, cos pi by 2 is 0. So, 0 0 1. So, 0 0 1 then I have sin alpha means sin pi by 2 is 1. So, which means this is sin theta 1 minus cos theta 1 and cos pi by 2 is 0. So, sin theta 1 minus cos theta 1 0. So, sin theta 1 minus cos theta 1 0. So, A is 0. So, 0 0 B is also 0. So, all are 0. Now, we would like to do the, the second transformations which will be relating between the second frame and the third frame. So, I have B 2 0 0 0. So, everything is 0. So, cos 0 is 1 sin 0 is 0. So, 1 0 0. So, 1 0 0 then sin theta is 0 cos 0 1 alpha was taken as 0. So, 0 1 0. So, 0 1 0. The last one sin alpha is sin 0 0 0 this is cos 0 is 1. So, 0 0 1 and then a is 0. So, 0 0 b 2. So, 0 0 b 2. So, that is the way we relate the transformation between two coordinate frames and in the following chapter okay, we will see that what will be the final transformation between x 1 and x 3. I mean just to give you a little hint from now on. So, so far what we have done is I have found out. So, relation between frame frame 1 and frame 2 and I found out relation between frame 2 and frame 3. So, if I want to indicate with a little arrow here. So, I have calculated between this and I have calculated between this. So, this is my T 1 and this is my T 2. If I have then in the following chapter I will calculate this as a total t and as we have learned at the beginning that this will be t 1 into t 2 to find out relation between the first frame and the last frame like this. So, if you give me a task to be carried out by the end effector, I can find out its relation in the base frame and I will be able to do all these calculations. Okay. That will be the part of next chapter after knowing this individual transformation matrices which is part of this chapter. So, we go back. So, this one you have already uh, done the d h parameters. So, this is the prismatic join and the revolute join. For this the transformation matrices are T 1 and T 2. T 1 will be 1 0 0 0 0 1 0 minus 1 0 0 0 B 1. B 1 is a variable quantity here and for T 2 this will be cos theta 2 sin theta 2. 0 the way I have shown you for two previous examples same thing can be done here. Now, let us move on to little complex that means, this is now a 
spherical system here i have a spherical system okay this is like a spherical robot which we have done in the first class okay because this end effector if you try to find out how the end effector moves it will move in a Relation. sphere yes in the prismatic theory, okay three four one minute let me go back go back yes yes the, the, the value of b1 okay the value of b1 the value of b1 is a variable quantity depending on how you want to move this end effector b1 will be specified as a function of time understand in the dh parameters okay on dh parameters yes Oh, okay, there is a mistake here. This should be written as B2 here. Yes, that should, should be B1. Yes, that should be B1. Yeah. Also, yes, the value of alpha 2. Alpha 2. Alpha 2 should be, should be 0. 0. Okay, I think you are right. Let me just check with my book. Uh, okay. Alpha 2. Yes, you are right. Alpha 2 will be 0. Yes, that is a mistake. So, okay. Okay. Let me correct for you that immediately. Okay. So, okay, the next one, this will be 1 and this will be 0, okay. Okay, here I have corrected for you, okay. So, now proceed to the next one. So, this is my uh, spherical uh, type arm and in the spherical if you go to my first lecture it is there that the first one is revolute, second one is revolute and the third one is a prismatic one. We go very systematic manner remembering what we have studied in the frame allotment. So, the first body 0 I will fix my coordinate frame x 1 y 1 z 1. Then uh, this is my z 1, this is my z 2 and this is my z 3. So, common perpendicular of z 1 and z 2 that means, this is my the common perpendicular this is z 1, this is my z 2. So, common perpendicular is x 2 okay, towards my arrow. So, I have shown you x 2 this is my z 2, this is my z 3. So, common perpendicular between these two is x 3. Okay. x 3 could be this, x 3 could be that, but here I have used the right hand things and put x 3 in this side. There is no harm if you want to put x 3 other side also. Since for the fourth joint there is no restriction. So, I put along the length of this link as z 4. In this case z 4 is also parallel to z 3. So, common perpendicular is any direction this could be x 4 or this could have been x 4 also because they are representing the same line, but I have just arbitrarily put x 4 here. So, that makes this is as a y 4. Notice here for the first frame I have decided to put I have decided to put the origin of the first frame here. Okay. 
even though one may like to put it here at the at the root if I put it at the root there will be a quantity from here and here that means from the plane to this axis some distance which should be coming into my formulas which will be used for multiplication addition etcetera. But if I put my origin here there will be no change in the motion you can intuitively think if theta 1 is rotating, if theta 1 is rotating, so that means this is rotating, no? this rotation will not change, uh, will not change the motion of, will not change the motion of this one. Okay. So, just to make life simple, uh, we put it O 1 and O 2 here okay. and that way some of the parameters will come out to be simple. Now, we go back to allot the numbers. <coughs> so, B 1, B 1 was the distance between x 1 and x 2. Since I have put x 1 and x 2 in the same place, so that is 0. Theta 1, because it is a revolute joint, A 1 is the length between x 1 and x 2 sorry z 1 and z 2, but I put z 1 and z 2 in the same place. So, it is 0 alpha 1 is the angle between z 1 and z 2. So, what is the angle between z 1 and z 2? So, that was my z 1 this is my z 2 and about x 2 is 90 degree. So, that was <coughs> So, that was 90 degree. For the next one B 2 is the distance between x 2 and x 3. So, what is the distance between x 2 and x 3? So, this is my x 2 here and this is my x 3 here. So, distance between x 2 and x 3 is B 2 along z 2 directions which I consider as a positive. So, so that is my B 2. Since it is a revolute joint, theta 2 is remain as a variable quantity, a 2 is the distance between z 2 and z 3 along x 3. So, z 2 is here and z 3 is here. So, they are intersecting. So, no distance. So, that means b 2 is b 2 is 0. So, b 2 is 0 alpha 2 is the angle between z 2 and z 3. So, angle between this is my z 2 and this is my z 3. Since I have used right hand rule, so about x 3 it is 90 degree like this. So, so this is pi by 2. Coming to the last one B 3 is the distance between z 3 and z 4. So, this is my z 3 here uh, sorry b 3 it will be distance between x 3 and x 4. So, x 3 and x 4. So, this is the variable quantity b 3 just for your convenience I wanted to show you if b 3 is 0 then what will be the link positions. So, if B 3 is 0 then this should be the position of the this is my and then this will be become So, this will be my B 3 So, this will be B 3 0. So, this is for your understanding purposes B 3 is a variable quantity I have showed you some arbitrary configuration in the drawing, but for your understanding
okay so we are back uh, I was trying to explain you that if B3 value is 0 then what is the position which I have shown you on this diagram using the red color here and as it is a variable quantity you have to specify as a some function of time and then that link 3 will move accordingly for this 3 link 3 degree of freedom robot theta 1 and theta 2 have to be specified how to specify that is part of uh, another problem in robotics called trajectory planning we will study that one later towards the end of our course. So, now I have completed my uh, DH parameter for the, the spherical type. I wanted to uh, do this on this paper that how can we calculate uh, this thing. Let me uh, copy down my DH parameters also on the paper and 0 theta 1 0 pi by 2 B 2 theta 2 0 pi by 2 B 3 0 0 0. I just put underline to indicate the joint variable. I am also writing my dh transformation matrices from my book here. So, this is minus sin theta i cos alpha i cos theta i cos alpha i sin alpha i 0 then sin theta i sin alpha i minus cos theta i sin alpha i cos alpha i 0 a i cos theta i a i sin theta i b i 1. Okay. Now, since I wanted to partition to know that this part is square. Now, let us do for T 1 that means relationship between frame 1 and frame 2. So, this is B i, this is theta i a i alpha i right. So, theta 1 is a variable quantity. So, this remains cos theta 1 sin theta 1 0 0 cos alpha i this is 0. So, 0 0 1 0 then sin alpha is 1. So, this is sin theta 1 minus cos theta 1 this is 0 pi by 2 0 0 and a i a 1 a 1 is 0 0 0 0 1. So, my T 1 which is the relationship between frame 1 and frame 2. So, this is relation ship between frame 1 and frame 2. This portion is my rotation Q and this is O that means origin of 2 in 1. Okay. I wanted to spend little time here first to show you from my screen that this is the one which I have derived cos theta 1 sin theta 1 0 0 0 1 sin theta 1 minus cos theta 1 0 and 0 0 0 1. I wanted to now show you geometrically that this has been done correctly or not by referring you to that figure. So, now frame 1 is here z 1 x 1 y 1 
frame 2 is here x 2, y 2 and z 2 is this directions right. Now, the rotation matrix between frame 1 and frame 2 as per our previous understanding means that it is unit vector along x 2 in x 1, y 1, z 1 will give me the first column of q. So, x 2 is along x 1 directions right. So, this is 1 0 0 just remember 1 0 0 and uh, this is the position where the way I have shown here 1 0 0 this is corresponding to theta 1 value for equal to 0 if theta 1 is 0 then x 1 and x 2 are parallel if theta 1 is 90 degree if theta 1 is 90 degree then or say 45 degree for the timing if theta 1 is 45 degree. So, this will be the position of x 2 and then this will be position of y 2 this will be the position of y 2 and this angle is theta 1 theta 1 is equal to pi by 4. Now, since theta 1 is the variable quantity even though in this diagram x 1 and x 2 uh, parallel, but for the transformation matrix this should be cos theta 1 sin theta 1 0 which you have seen in your T 1 which we have just now derived. Now, the second column means it is the y unit vector along y 2 projected along x 1, y 1 and z 1. So, y 2 is along the z 1 directions. So, the second column of our T 1 matrix should be 0 0 1 for the key. Now, you look at the second column it is 0 0 1. Now, the third part third column is my z 2. So, z 2 z 2 is here. So, as this theta 1 moves, so z 2 will also move ah I am sorry uh, this is this was not y 2 this was not y 2 this was not y 2 actually this was x 2 and accordingly this is your z 2 which moved. So, this angle is theta 1. Okay. So, since it was x 2 in that directions and this will be z 2. So, its component along x 1 y 1 z 1 would be sin theta 1 minus cos theta 1 and 0 which you can check which will be the third column of q in T 1. So, this is the way the transformation matrices should be interpreted. If you go to now the next transformation that is T 2 T 2 which would mean the transformation between frame 3 and frame 2 you can calculate similar to the previous one I will do it for you I will do it for you on the paper T 2 T 2 is now theta 2 is a variable quantity cos theta 2 sin theta 2 0 0 then I have uh, alpha 2 is pi by 2. So, alpha 2 pi by 2 means this is again 0 0 1 0 alpha 2 is sin alpha 2 is 1. So, this is sin theta 2 minus cos theta 2 cos alpha is 0 0 then a is 0. So, 0 0 b 2 1. So, in the T 1 I was trying to explain you relationship between uh, the T 1 and T 2 in terms of the Q portion. Here let us try to understand in terms of the O portion you may similarly verify the Q which looks similar. Let us look at this part this means O of 
O of 3 in 2. So, this means that this means that okay, O 3 in 2. Let us look at the diagram to see that if I measure the coordinate of O 3 whether in 2 it is 0 0 B 2 or not. So, go back. So, this is my O 3 here. So, here I have O 3. I want to measure O 3 in coordinate frame x 2 y 2 z 2. So, x 2 is the x y O 2 is here. So, from here this is my x 2 that is my y 2 is here and z 2 is here. So, O 3 is lying along the z 3 directions at a distance b 2 no other component in other directions. So, the coordinate of O 3 in frame 2 should be 0 0 b 2. Now, you go back to my paper here that it is 0 0 b 2. Okay. So, similarly the frame 3 I can derive in another page. So, T 3 can be calculated as ok. So, T 3 now B 3 is a variable quantity rest at 0. So, cos 0 is 1 sin 0 is 0 this is 0 this is 0 then alpha cos 0 is 1 sin theta is 0. So, 0 this will be 1 this will be 0 this will be 0 then we go sin alpha 0 cos sin alpha 0 cos alpha 1 0 a i 0 0 b 3 and So, for the third one, so this means the rotation between, so this is a relationship, relationship between frame 3 and frame 4. So, this portion shows it is an identity matrix means x 3 is parallel to x 4, y 3 parallel to y 4 and z 3 is parallel to z 4. That means, these 3 axis are parallel to each other. Only thing is the variable b 3 which is when they are 0 the origin o 3, o 3 and o 4 same if b 3 equal to 0. Let us go back to the drawing to see whether this is clear or not. So, in this diagram now, so x 3 here is parallel to x 4, y y 4 is parallel to y 3 and and of course, z 3 and z 4 are parallel and if O 4 comes to O 3 then B 3 equal to 0 that means, no distance between O 3 and O 4, but since this is a variable quantity we leave it as B 3 at certain distance. So, this is the way the transformations happens and as we go in the next chapter after few classes we will see that this multiplication of this multiplication of this uh, rotations that means, one rotation here another rotation here and then another rotation here will give me my total rotation. There I call it total transformations also because this transformation matrices T include not only Q, but also the positions.
So that is, those are the transformations which you have derived. You can just verify uh, from your hand calculations which we have done with me and these are the frame transformation for spherical arm. So that was basically part of the summary in the last class. So that was pending portions I have just now covered. Now we will move on to our The, the today's mathematical concept part, but I will stop for a while here if there are quick questions. So, if there is nothing, let us move on. You can ask me again uh, towards the end if you like to. So, vectors, what do we mean by vectors? We have studied in our high school, also in our undergraduate, maybe first year, second year level. Vectors, we have been told, is a quantity which has directions as well as the magnitude. For example, my pen here. If I want to indicate a point A with respect to certain origin, let us say here with my right hand edge, let us put it like this. My right hand edge is the origin here. So, I can put a frame here, whatever way you like and this is a point say 0 or rather O. My right hand is O, my left hand is A. So, I can say my pin is a vector quantity because it is showing the directions which is along this and it has a magnitude. So, in our earlier studies we have studied that a vector is a quantity which has a length and directions. So, this is the length and the direction is this one. Now, to represent a vector we take help of many different ideas. One is I can fix up a frame here and I can calculate x coordinate, y coordinate and z coordinate. If you give me these three coordinate x, y, z, I can calculate the length as well as the directions which I will show you soon. Other than the vector quantity which I have just showed you that was called position vector or a Cartesian vector. We also use the term vector to represent just array of numbers, not necessarily three coordinates. If there are n coordinates, okay, we also refer them as a vectors and the concepts of position vector or Cartesian vector as we call it, many of the properties can be extended or used for n dimensional vector as well and that is a subject of basically linear algebra. So, what I am showing you now basically some part of linear algebra. So, look at this slides now. For our course we will call a vector is a array of n numbers written column wise. I want to emphasize this point written column wise. If you look at several books, they will call column vector, they will call row vector. Let us ourselves decide a vector rather than calling row vector and column vector. I will say vector means a column okay, like this as I have written it here. So, for me a vector is a column vector all the time. So, I need not tell column vector, column vector, column vector. A vector means automatically column to me, but for many mathematical operations I need a row vector. So, if you want to tell a row vector which means array of numbers in horizontal manner, then I should call it a, a transpose because for me any array of number, if I want to call it a vector, it should be like this A. 
So, if it is an array of numbers, I always understand A as this, but for mathematical operation, if I need a row vector of this type, which from the linear algebra definition, it is called A transpose. Okay. So, this is something to be remembered and followed throughout. Now, a vector as I just told you, it has a direction and magnitude. So, if it is an n dimensional vector, it has a magnitude a, we define as italics a is a transpose a and square root. So, a 1 square up to a n square and the square root, which will give you the magnitude. If you ask me direction of this vector a, this is little difficult to express geometrically. So, I say okay, let us take a help of three dimensional vector Cartesian vector for which I can define the directions, but before that let us see the diagram. So, here I have indicated point A and this is origin O and if I want to indicate where is A with respect to O, I can take the help of a definition vector definition. If I join this, this is A, this has a component A 3 which is this vertical line, then it has a component A 1 and A 2 which is nothing but A x, A y and A z. So, what is its magnitude? Magnitude will be magnitude would be first we can use Pythagoras theorem to calculate a 1 square plus a 2 square is this length and then a 1 square a 2 square plus a 3 square will be this length square. So, if I want to find out this, so it will be the square root of a 1 square a 2 square and a 3 square and that is nothing but a transpose a. Let me show you how I calculate A transpose A as this. Go to my page. So, A is a vector, I say it is always a column vector for me, and the length A is A1 square plus a 2 square plus a 3 square and then square root of that. And I am claiming this one as a transpose a. So, a is this a transpose is a 1 a 2 a 3. Just now I told you that if a is a column a transpose would be a row. So, A transpose A should be A 1, A 2, A 3 and then A 1, A 2, A 3. So, from matrix operations you know this will be multiplied with this, this should be multiplied with that and that should be multiplied with this and they have to be added. So, A 1 A square plus A 2 square plus a 3 square. So, that is the reason I have written this thing here that magnitude a is nothing but square root of a transpose a. Now, talking about the directions. So, that was my drawing there and I have a point a, this is my vector a it has a projections on the plane and then I do parallel. So, this is my x, this is my y, this is my z. I indicated this as a 1 here, indicated as a 2 here and then parallel to this thing. Oops, a 3 here. Okay. 
So, now the direction so one can define maybe direction is this angle with respect to the plane. So, this angle say A n g l e. So, A n g l e can be calculated as tan inverse this length which is A 3 over this length right and this length will be A 1 square plus. So, if I give you the coordinates A 1, A 2, A 3, this will completely define the vector. In other words, vector has a magnitude and directions. Knowing these three components, I can calculate its magnitudes and the directions, which is the characteristic of a vector. Since I told you in the last class, we do not want to use tan inverse functions in a computation purposes in a computer, we would prefer to use a tan to function and that is the reason on my slides, if you go to my slide now, I have showed you the angle is a tan 2 of a 3, okay. that is my the first argument, the top argument and the, the bottom argument is here that is square root of a 1 square plus a t square. So, because this will have in unambiguous, this will have unambiguous angle. Now, what is the meaning of a unit vector? Again, I go to the page here. Suppose I have a vector okay, which relates O and this is A, I say this is my vector A. What is the meaning of unit vector? It is like a taking a scale, it is like taking a scale and measure it. Okay. Okay, this is 1 centimeter, 2 centimeter. So, 1 unit, 2 unit, 3 centimeter, 4 centimeter, 4.5 centimeter. So, concept of unit vector is same. Suppose, if I divide into several parts and telling this is my unit vector, then this vector A is nothing but 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 into say a bar vector where a bar is a unit vector and this is nothing but a magnitude magnitude of vector a in this case i have counted here as 5 that's why i have written 5 otherwise i should be written as a magnitude into this so this will take me to a bar vector which is my unit vector is nothing but a vector and the magnitude a we also write it as a many times as a magnitude of a so unit vector is nothing but the vector itself divided by its magnitude so now if i have a vector if I have a vector in a three dimensional coordinate system as I was showing it in the previous calculations. So, this is my A and this has been projected and this is like that this and So, this is a 1, this is a 2, this is a 3. So, we use the concept of vector summation, this vector is equal to this plus that. Now, what is this vector? This vector, if I take a unit vector along z direction as k for example, so this vector is nothing but a 3 into k, because a 3 is the magnitude from here to here and k is the 
unit vector a 3 into k. What is this vector? This vector is summation of this and this. So, what is this? So, if there is a unit vector called i, so these portions will be a 1 into i. What about this portion? Since this is my unit vector j say, so this component will be a 2 into j. So, in a sense a vector a can be written as a 1 i plus a 2 j plus a 3 k. Okay. Where i j k is a unit vector along x, unit vector along y and unit vector along z. Since i is a unit vector along x, I know this will have a magnitude 1 0 0 because it has directions only along x and since it has a unit magnitude, so it should be unity 1. So, j along y should have 0 1 0. So, it has only component 1 along y no other component then k which is along z will be 0 0 1. Okay. Now, if you want to verify this, if you put those values 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1, you will end up with a a 1 a 2 a 3 component. This thing also we have done at the beginning of this chapter. So, any vector a can be written as uh, in terms of the unit vectors and the components along the these are the components along those axis and the unit vectors in this direction. If you have decided to represent them in a coordinate frame, if you have defined in a coordinate frame, coordinate frame like this and then finally, you want to write it in a coordinate frame, then this is the expressions it becomes. Go back to the slide. So, this is the same thing I have done it here that a the a unit vector a uh, is vector itself divided by its length. Example of unit vectors are i j k along the x y and z directions. So, any vector can then be represented as a 1 i a 2 j and a 3 k. Now, <coughs> There are two products we define related to vectors. The first one is called scalar or dot products. Okay. So, a dot b, a dot b, we also will represent in this course as a transpose b, okay, which is nothing but as we know from our first year level course, magnitude of a magnitude of b and the cos between those angles. Let us look at the geometry. So, here I have a vector a, I have a vector b and the angle between them is theta. So, a dot b is magnitude of a, magnitude of b cos theta. So, if you look at these projections that means O A, O A is nothing but magnitude of B into cos theta. So, if we go back, if we go back B cos theta, B cos theta is nothing but our O A in the diagram. Okay that multiplied by a will give me a dot b. In a way, a dot b is a pro is a projections of a vector on another vector. I repeat projections of vector b on a and then scaled by magnitude of a, is not it? So, let us go back to the diagram here. go back to the diagram. 
so this one so this part is nothing but magnitude of b and cos theta scaled by magnitude of a okay so b cos theta part is nothing but the projections of a so dot product is interpreted as the projections of b on a scaled by the magnitude of a this is also same as suppose if i take the projections of a on b so this one so this is 90 degree so this distance is now a cos theta so now it is the projections of a on b and scaled by b magnitude to talk about its cross uh, dot product right and similarly here it will be a to talk about the cross product. so this is the interpretation so a transpose b or a dot b can be interpreted as projection of one vector on another one scaled by that vector in case in case both are unit vectors in case both are unit vectors okay suppose they have a magnitude 1 magnitude 1 okay so only angle is theta so if the magnitude is 1 this is 1 this is 1 so a transpose b b transpose a both magnitude is 1 so it will be cos theta so if a and b are unit vectors then a dot b is nothing but cos between the angle if you remember now in our q matrix we had u transpose x u transpose y okay since they were unit vectors so the u transpose x was just the angle between u and x and that was the reason the direction cosine cosine term was appearing and those cosine terms were basically talking the direction of one vector with respect to the another vector and that was the reason direction cosine name came for that representation ok so we so now we understood what is the meaning of dot product which is also called as a scalar product and if you know the component of these vectors as a1 a2 a3 b1 b2 b3 one can calculate the dot product as a1 b1 plus a2 b2 so and so forth up to a n b n for three dimensional vectors it will be a1 b1 plus a2 b2 plus a3 b3 okay there is another product in vector quantities we told you i told you that there is a scalar and dot product there is also called the cross product why it is called scalar product because these are two vector quantities a and b the way they are defined it gives a scalar quantity okay so that's why it is called a scalar product okay whereas here cross product between two vectors a and b a and b will give me a quantity which is a another vector that is c that's why it is called a vector product let's look at its operations so i have a vector a i have a vector b the angle made between vector a and b is theta a cross b will give you a vector c which is perpendicular to both the vectors as i have indicated in these symbols here in other words c is a vector which is perpendicular to the plane here and the plane is formed by vector a and b so i can now imagine my plane is formed by this 
my plane is formed by that and c vector is perpendicular to this plane formed by vectors a and b. How it is defined? It is defined when we write the calculations we write i j k the three uh, unit vectors okay, and the components of a 1, a 2, a 3, b 1, b 2, b 3. The way we calculate the determinant of a matrix very similar operations we perform here c is defined as that vector which is which is calculated as so i leave this column and row out so then i do this a2 b3 minus b2 a3 right then i leave the middle rows and column out then i would do a3 b1 minus a 1 b 3 a 3 b 1 minus a 1 b 3. I am sure these operations you know. So, that is the way I calculate a 2 b 3 a 2 b 3 minus a 3 b 2 into i plus a 3 b 1 minus a 1 b 3 into j plus a 1 b 2 minus a 2 b 1 into k. Assuming that a b and c all three vectors are represented in a coordinate frame whose unit vectors are i, j and k. Now, what is the magnitude of this vector c? That is defined as c as defined as magnitude of a, magnitude of b and sin of this angle. One can alternatively also calculate using our previous definition. Since this is since this component now here is my c 1, this will be my c 2 that means, component of c along y, component of c along x and component of c along z, one can calculate square root of c 1 a square plus c 2 square plus c 3 square also and that can be also obtained as magnitude of a, magnitude of b and the sign between those angle. Now, now, since magnitude of c is equal to magnitude of a, magnitude of b into sin theta, what happens if theta is equal to 0? If theta equal to 0, that means what? That means theta equal to 0 means this is my b, this is my b. So, a and b are same. So, sin 0 is 0. In other words, sin 0 0 means there is no magnitude of c. So, if c does not have any magnitude, so c is only this point. So, c which is defined as a cross b, if the angle between a and b is 0, then c is also 0. So, in other words cross product of a vector with itself does not produce any result. So, that is 0. In a similar manner we can go back to our dot product. Imagine now I have b vector uh, is this one that means, it is 90 degree. So, if b is 90 degree to a, so the dot product value is cos of 90 and cos of 90 is a 0 and as I told you dot product means projections of a vector on another vector. Now, we using our engineering graphics knowledge in our first year engineering you can look at you can look at this vector from the top this is my i here okay so if you look from the top you see a point here which means this vector does not have any component on a if you look from the top and that is the meaning of dot product that a dot b will be zero if they are perpendicular 
to each other. So that was magnitude of A, uh, uh, magnitude of A, magnitude of B sin theta. There are certain properties of cross products which can help to speed up our calculations. Here this kind of formulas will be available in some mathematical handbooks or higher engineering mathematics books, but some of them I am referring to you and one of them will be very important for us which is shown here, but before that let us go here. A cross B cross C. Remember this bracket is here. Okay. So, which means first B cross C operation should be performed which will give you say a new vector D for example and then I will be doing A cross D. This can be calculated as A transpose C into B minus A transpose B into C. The way I remember I can share my trick you may like to remember the same way I say ok let us hold let us hold this middle vector. First thing I have to remember that A should be multiplied with A, A will be cross product with a vector whose operation should be done first that means they should be bracket here. Then I hold B here. So, whatever is remaining I will be doing the transposing. So, whatever will be remaining I will be doing the transposing holding B here. Then I know there will be minus sign here. So, next time I will hold this one. So, I hold this one here and I do the transposing here. So, I do the transposing here. Couple of times you memorize you practice you get this formula memorized in your brain. Since I have been doing it teaching to the students I remember. Here interestingly the properties geometrical properties which I told you they will be very suitably used. Suppose A is a vector B is a vector and for some reason you know C is a vector which is orthogonal or perpendicular to A. So, if it is so, if A is orthogonal to C, you know this term is 0, A transpose C is 0 because they are orthogonal or perpendicular, they need not be calculated. So, I do not worry, I only calculate these portions A transpose B into C. So, I save lot of calculations here because if you try to calculate the number of multiplication additions in a programming language which computer has to do lot of savings will be done that is number one. Number two if somebody told you that okay, B cross C B and C are parallel then obviously, I do not do any calculations because they are parallel. In other words A cross A cross C for example, if I ask you the result of this A cross A cross C. So, A cross A cross C, so A transpose A he will be also just square of the magnitude of A. So, that way lot of simplifications will be possible if you remember this formula and if you know the geometry of those vectors. Coming to next formula A transpose that means A dot B cross C is nothing but a determinant of vector A that means, it is A 1, A 2, A 3, B 1, B 2, B 3 and C 1, C 2, C 3. Here also now we can apply the determinant formulas. For example, if I ask you what is the result of A transpose C cross B, A transpose C cross B. Okay. So, I put A here, I cross C here, I cross B here. Now, this is also determinant A C B, but I know in a determinant formula if I interchange the rows, if I interchange the columns or rows the determinant value is negative. So, if I interchange this I know negative. So, then I can tell immediately that A transpose C cross B 
is equal to minus of determinant of a b c. Okay. So, that way we can take the knowledge of one domain to another domain and we can utilize and that is the reason this kind of formula helps. The third one is a cross 1, 1 is identity matrix here into b is nothing but a cross b. This is some representation purposes I have done it a cross 1 into b a into b it is a definition nothing more than that I am defining a cross b is nothing but a cross 1 into b and this a cross 1 I indicate is a matrix capital A and then one can find out here I have a cross b formula right I have a cross b formula is here whose components are here, here and here. Now, if I ask you the questions take b 1 b 2 b 3 as a vector b that means, if I ask you this is my b 1 b 1 b 2 and b 3 what will be the coefficient matrix. So, that this matrix A into B, A into B will give me the cross product results. So, look at the first one, the first component is 0 into B 1, this is minus A 3 B 2 and plus A 2 B 3. So, A 2 B 3 minus A 3 B 2. So, you see here A 2 B 3 minus A 3 B 1. So, it is just a definition we introduce and this helps to us to write a cross product definition as a matrix vector formulas. So, here A cross B can be calculated as a matrix vector calculation. So, when I am using matrix software, software like MATLAB which can do all this matrix operation. So, I may not do A cross B as a separate function, I can do as a multiplication of A into B. Notice here this matrix A, this matrix A has a very special structure and that is called skew symmetric matrix. I will write it for you on this page, it is called skew symmetric matrix. It is called skew symmetric matrix and we call it as a cross product matrix because A into B gives me A cross B. So, we call it is a cross product matrix, cross product matrix with respect to A because this matrix A has the components of elements A for skew symmetric matrix this is always the property diagonal elements are all zeros. So, this is A 1 minus A 1 A 2 minus A 2 for your information skew symmetric matrix will be defined as a is equal to minus a t. So, this is the definition of a skew symmetric for symmetric matrix the definition is a is equal to a transpose, but for skew symmetric it is a minus. So, this has a components of a in a order like this thing plus minus plus minus plus minus. So, plus minus plus minus plus minus. I go this directions, come back these directions and go in that direction. Okay. In fact, if you look at little carefully the vector A is nothing but half into A 3 2 minus A 2 3, A 1 3 minus A 3 1 and this is A 2 1 minus A 1 2. That means, A 3 2 element minus a 2 3 element, a 1 3 element, a 3 1 element, a 2 1 element and 
a3 element and this will give you nothing but the components of a1 a2 a3 so these are all interlinked things the way i define it here these things are automatically follow not that i define but a set of researchers follow these things for the convenience of the calculations in linear algebra uh, just uh, two more slides uh, differentiation of a vector is nothing but differentiation of its components so if a vector has a components whose are function of times then da dt is a vector derivative which you can represent as a, a dot is nothing but a1 dot to a n dot straightforward thing if i use the cross product or dot product formulas and I need to do the time derivatives of those. We use simply chain rules like we do it for scalar terms that A transpose B time derivative is nothing but A dot transpose B plus A transpose B dot. This kind of formulas valid. A cross B is A dot cross B plus A cross B dot. So, chain rules which we apply for scalar quantities is also applied for these vector quantities means vector multiplications. And this is maybe initially little confusing, little difficult, but you just remember it as we go and if we require we will explain it more details. Linear independence is the term which says for a set of n independent vectors, if alpha i a i i equal to 1 to n is equal to 0, for n independent vector, if this is 0, this automatically means alpha i is equal to 0, and that helps many a times for us to interpret some formulas particularly for our case we will see application of this rule when you go to dynamics. Okay. So, with this uh, I stop matrices will take up in the next class not much is there. So, I stop here and do the summary several examples of dh related parameters and transformations are shown mathematical fundamentals the vectors some definitions are given matrices will be covered in the next class so i thank you if you have quick questions i will take it wait for about 30 seconds before i leave so if questions raise it Okay, thank you.